Joseph Louis Lagrange, born Giuseppe Lodovico Lagrangia or Giuseppe Ludovico de Lagrange Tornia, was an Italian Enlightenment era mathematician and astronomer. He made significant contributions to the fields of analysis, number theory, and both classical and celestial mechanics. In 1766, on the recommendation of Euler and d'Alembert, Lagrange succeeded Euler as the director of mathematics at the Prussian Academy of Sciences in Berlin, Prussia, where he stayed for over 20 years, producing volumes of work and winning several prizes of the French Academy of Sciences. Lagrange's treatise on analytical mechanics, written in Berlin and first published in 1788, offered the most comprehensive treatment of classical mechanics since Newton and formed a basis for the development of mathematical physics in the 19th century. In 1787, at age 51, he moved from Berlin to Paris and became a member of the French Academy. He remained in France until the end of his life. He was significantly involved in the decimalization in revolutionary France became the first professor of analysis at the École Polytechnique upon its opening in 1794, founding member of the Bureau des Longitudes and Senator in 1799. Scientific contribution Lagrange was one of the creators of the calculus of variations, deriving the Euler-Lagrange equations for extreme row functionals. He also extended the method to take into account possible constraints, arriving at the method of Lagrange multipliers. Lagrange invented the method of solving differential equations known as variation of parameters, applied differential calculus to the theory of probabilities and attained notable work on the solution of equations. He proved that every natural number is a sum of four squares. His treatise Theory des Functions Analytics laid some of the foundations of group theory, anticipating Galois. In calculus, Lagrange developed a novel approach to interpolation and Taylor series. He studied the three-body problem for the Earth, Sun and Moon and the movement of Jupiter's satellites, and in 1772 found the special case solutions to this problem that yield what are now known as Lagrangian points. But above all, he is best known for his work on mechanics, where he has transformed Newtonian mechanics into a branch of analysis, Lagrangian mechanics as it is now called, and presented the so-called mechanical principles as simple results of the variational calculus. Biography In appearance he was of medium height, and slightly formed, with pale blue eyes and a colorless complexion. In character he was nervous and timid, he detested controversy, and to avoid it willingly allowed others to take the credit for what he had himself done. He always thought out the subject of his papers before he began to compose them, and they usually wrote them straight off without a single erasure or correction. W. W. Rouse Ball Early years born as Giuseppe Lodovico Lagrangia, Lagrange was of Italian and French descent. His paternal great-grandfather was a French army officer who had moved to Turin, the de facto capital of the Kingdom of Piedmont Sardinia at Lagrange's time, and married an Italian, so did his grandfather and his father. His mother was from the countryside of Turin. He was raised as a Roman Catholic. His father, who had charge of the king's military chest and was treasurer of the Office of Public Works and Fortifications in Turin, should have maintained a good social position and wealth, but before his son grew up he had lost most of his property in speculations. A career as a lawyer was planned out for Lagrange by his father, and certainly Lagrange seems to have accepted this willingly. He studied at the University of Turin and his favorite subject was classical Latin. At first he had no great enthusiasm for mathematics, finding Greek geometry rather dull. It was not until he was 17 that he showed any taste for mathematics, his interest in the subject being first excited by a paper by Edmund Halley which he came across by accident. 
Alone and unaided he threw himself into mathematical studies, at the end of a year's incessant toil he was already an accomplished mathematician. Charles Emmanuel III appointed Lagrange to serve as the Sostituto del Maestro di Matematica at the Royal Military Academy of the Therian, practice of artillery in 1755, where he taught courses in calculus and mechanics to support the Piedmontese Army's early adoption of the ballistics theories of Benjamin Robbins and Leonhard Euler. In that capacity, Lagrange was the first to teach calculus in an engineering school school. According to Alessandro Papacino d'Antoni, the Academy's military commander and famous artillery theorist, Lagrange unfortunately proved to be a problematic professor with his oblivious teaching style, abstract reasoning, and impatience with artillery and fortification engineering applications. In this academy one of his students was François David de Fonsenec. Variational Calculus Lagrange is one of the founders of the Calculus of Variations. Starting in 1754, he worked on the problem of tautochrone, discovering a method of maximizing and minimizing functionals in a way similar to finding extreme row functions. Lagrange wrote several letters to Leonhard Euler between 1754 and 1756 describing his results. Lagrange also applied his ideas to problems of classical mechanics, generalizing the results of Euler and Maupertuis. Euler was very impressed with Lagrange's results. It has been stated that, with characteristic courtesy, he withheld a paper he had previously written, which covered some of the same ground, in order that the young Italian might have time to complete his work and claim the undisputed invention of the new calculus. However, this chivalric view has been disputed. Lagrange published his method in two memoirs of the Turin Society in 1762 and 1773, Miscellanea Torinensia in 1758. With the aid of his pupils, Lagrange established a society, which was subsequently incorporated as the Turin Academy of Sciences, and most of his early writings are to be found in the five volumes of its transactions, usually known as the Miscellanea Torinensia. Many of these are elaborate papers. The first volume contains a paper on the theory of the propagation of sound. In this he indicates a mistake made by Newton, obtains the general differential equation for the motion, and integrates it for motion in a straight line. This volume also contains the complete solution of the problem of a string vibrating transversely. In this paper he points out a lack of generality. In the solutions previously given by Brooke Taylor, D'Alembert, and Euler, and arrives at the conclusion that the form of the curve at any time t is given by the equation. The article concludes with a masterly discussion of echoes, beats, and compound sounds. Other articles in this volume are on recurring series, probabilities, and the calculus of variations. The second volume contains a long paper embodying the results of several papers in the first volume on the theory and notation of the calculus of variations, and he illustrates its use by deducing the principle of least action, and by solutions of various problems in dynamics. The third volume includes the solution of several dynamical problems by means of the calculus of variations, some papers on the integral calculus, a solution of Fermat's problem mentioned above, given an integer n which is not a perfect square, to find a number x such that x 2 n plus 1 is a perfect square, and the general differential equations of motion for three bodies moving under their mutual attractions. The next work he produced was in 1764 on the libration of the moon, and an explanation as to why the same face was always turned to the earth, a problem which he treated by the aid of virtual work. His solution is especially interesting as containing the germ of the idea of generalized equations of motion, equations which he first formally proved in 1780. Berlin already in 1756, Euler and Maupertuis, seeing his mathematical talent, tried to persuade him to come to Berlin, but Lagrange had no such intention and shyly refused the offer. 
In 1765, de Lambert interceded on Lagrange's behalf with Frederick of Prussia and by letter, asked him to leave Turin for a considerably more prestigious position in Berlin. Lagrange again turned down the offer, responding that it seems to me that Berlin would not be at all suitable for me while M. Euler is there. In 1766, Euler left Berlin for St. Petersburg and Frederick himself wrote to Lagrange expressing the wish of the greatest king in Europe to have the greatest mathematician in Europe resident at his court. Lagrange was finally persuaded and he spent the next 20 years in Prussia, where he produced not only the long series of papers published in the Berlin and Turin transactions but also his monumental work. The Mechanique Analytiquette. In 1767, he married his cousin Vittoria Conti. Lagrange was a favorite of the king, who used frequently to discourse to him on the advantages of perfect regularity of life. The lesson went home, and thenceforth Lagrange studied his mind and body as though they were machines and found by experiment the exact amount of work which he was able to do without breaking down. Every night he set himself a definite task for the next day, and on completing any branch of a subject he wrote a short analysis to see what points in the demonstrations or in the subject matter were capable of improvement. He always thought out the subject of his papers before he began to compose them, and they usually wrote them straight off without a single erasure or correction. Nonetheless, during his years in Berlin, Lagrange's health was rather poor on many occasions, and that of his wife Victoria was even worse. She died in 1783 after years of illness and Lagrange was very depressed. In 1786, Frederick II died, and the climate of Berlin became rather trying for Lagrange. Paris in 1786, following Friedrich's death, Lagrange received similar invitations from states including Spain and Naples, and he accepted the offer of Louis XVI to move to Paris. In France he was received with every mark of distinction and special apartments in the Louvre were prepared for his reception, and he became a member of the French Academy of Sciences, which became part of the Institut de France. At the beginning of his residence in Paris he was seized with an attack of melancholy, and even the printed copy of his Mechanique on which he had worked for a quarter of a century lay for more than two years unopened on his desk. Curiosity as to the results of the French Revolution first stirred him out of his lethargy, a curiosity which soon turned to alarm as the revolution developed. It was about the same time, 1792, that the unaccountable sadness of his life and his timidity moved the compassion of 24-year-old René Françoise Adelaide Lemonnier daughter of his friend, the astronomer Pierre-Charles Limonier. She insisted on marrying him, and proved a devoted wife to whom he became warmly attached. In September of 1793, the Reign of Terror began. Under intervention of Antoine Lavoisier, who himself was by then already thrown out of the Academy along with many other scholars, Lagrange was specifically exempted by name in the decree of October 1793 that ordered all foreigners to leave France. On May 4, 1794, Lavoisier and 27 other tax farmers were arrested and sentenced to death and guillotined on the afternoon after the trial. Lagrange said on the death of Lavoisier, It took only a moment to cause this head to fall and a hundred years will not suffice to produce its like. Though Lagrange had been preparing to escape from France while there was yet time, he was never in any danger. Different revolutionary governments loaded him with honors and distinctions. This luckiness or safety may to some extent be due to his life attitude he expressed many years before. I believe that, in general, one of the first principles of every wise man is to conform strictly to the laws of the country in which he is living, even when they are unreasonable. A striking testimony to the respect in which he was held was shown in 1796 when the French commissary in Italy was ordered to attend in full state on Lagrange's father and tender the congratulations of the Republic on the achievements of his son, who had done honour to all mankind by his genius. 
and whom it was the special glory of Piedmont to have produced, it may be added that Napoleon, when he attained power, warmly encouraged scientific studies in France, and was a liberal benefactor of them. Appointed senator in 1799, he was the first signer of the Senatus Consulta, which in 1802 annexed his fatherland Piedmont to France. He acquired French citizenship in consequence. Units of measurement Lagrange was considerably involved in the process of making new standard units of measurement in the 1790s. He was offered the presidency of the Commission and for the reform of weights and measures when he was preparing to escape, and after Lavoisier's death in 1794, it was largely owing to Lagrange's influence that the final choice of the unit system of meter and kilogram was settled and the decimal subdivision was finally accepted by the Commission of 1799. Lagrange was also one of the founding members of the Bureau des Longitudes in 1795, École Normale in 1795. Lagrange was appointed to a mathematical chair at the newly established École Normale, which enjoyed only a brief existence of four months. His lectures there were quite elementary, and contained nothing of any special importance but they were published because the professors had to pledge themselves to the representatives of the people and to each other neither to read nor to repeat from memory, and the discourses were ordered to be taken down in shorthand in order to enable the deputies to see how the professors acquitted themselves. École Polytechnique in 1794, Lagrange was appointed professor of the École Polytechnique, and his lectures there, described by mathematicians who had the good fortune to be able to attend him, were almost perfect both in form and matter. Beginning with the merest elements, he led his hearers on until, almost unknown to themselves, they were themselves extending the bounds of the subject. Above all he impressed on his pupils the advantage of always using general methods expressed in a symmetrical notation. But Lagrange does not seem to have been a successful teacher. Fourier, who attended his lectures in 1795, wrote, His voice is very feeble, at least in that he does not become heated. He has a very marked Italian accent and pronounces the S like Z, the students of whom the majority are incapable of appreciating him, give him little welcome, but the professors make amends for it. Late years in 1810, Lagrange commenced a thorough revision of the Mécanique Analytiquette, but he was able to complete only about two-thirds of it before his death at Paris in 1813, in 128 Rue du Faubourg-Saint-Honoré. Napoleon honoured him with the Grand Croix of the Ordre Imperial de la Rare Acute Union just two days before he died. He was buried that same year in the Panthen in Paris. The French inscription on his tomb there reads, Joseph Louis Lagrange, Senator, Count of the Empire, Grand Officer of the Legion of Honour, Grand Cross of the Imperial Order of the Reunion, Member of the Institute and the Bureau of Longitude. Born in Turin on the 25th of January 1736, died in Paris on the 10th of April 1813.